Hey everybody, how we all doing? We're gonna be making some octopus today. I'm going to release the kraken. I'm gonna be trying to make some uh, tostadas with some octopus that we got over here. It's about a three pound octopus, more or less, which isn't really that big. It's about like that. This is our octopus for the day. Big old guy right here. To start off with octopus, the first thing that you need to do is find a way to tenderize it. There's a lot of different ways that people tenderize octopus. Let me see, I think I actually have this stupid, okay, I do have it on. Okay, I was, just, I was afraid I didn't have the audio on. So, there's a few ways that you can do octopus to tenderize it. The old-fashioned way is that you take it by the tentacles after it's dead and smash it against some rocks. Well, we're not going to do that. That's what we did it the other way, which is frozen. Oh wow, thank you so much for the sub there, Grady. I appreciate that. It's a good way to start the day. And from a Twitch Prime to a Tier 1, thank you so much for the Tier 1 sub. Now we get a little bit more water in here. Making some octopus today, Grady. I was talking about how we can tenderize it. There's two ways. You can beat it against a rock, or you can freeze it. This, we bought frozen at the restaurant. So we don't really have to worry about tenderizing. But for it to actually become tender, there's two different ways that you can do octopus and that's kind of um, the difference between more like Asian style cuisine and more European side. More European side is you're going to boil it for a longer time and the Asian side is going to be, it's very short boil, almost like a shock and then turn it off and it's good. Which isn't exactly thoroughly cooked through, but it works. I like to do it the other way, in the more Italian, uh, more traditional Italian style, where I'm going to boil this, it's probably going to take about a half hour, 45 minutes more or less, probably close to 45 minutes. You can tell just kind of like where the, um, what are they called, arms, tentacles? They come in and you can poke in there with the fork and it'll be good to go. Hey Crady, how you doing today? Thanks for being here and thank you for the sub. going well. Got a pot of water going back over here for our victim of the day. Our octopus. Hey, what's up Black Swiss? How you doing? How you doing buddy? How's the way? I haven't been able to catch any streams up lately. It's uh, just been working like crazy. I'm getting exhausted to be going on as well. What up Cucho? Hey, everybody's coming out today, huh? What's going on, guys? So if you didn't see, we have our... We're going to be releasing the Kraken today. Yeah, I'm sure everybody's been busy. Crazy busy lately, man. It's been insane. Restaurant has been... I can't believe how, how busy we've been. I'm just checking to see what I have to take out. If the eyes are gone, if the beak is gone, and everything like that. Looks like they left the beak in here. So I gotta get that out. How big is it? It's about three pounds, more or less. I think it was 3.17 pounds or something like that. So it's, let's see, the last bit of its tentacles are down here, but I would count it more like over here. Well, foot and a half, two foot. That's only about three pounds. We gotta take out the beak on this thing. Get the water out of this. Octopus is kind of weird with, um, Tenderizing, you need to tenderize by either freezing, which is the best the best way to really do it. Because the ice crystals, what they do is when it freezes, the ice crystals, they start penetrating the flesh and they make it more tender naturally, as opposed to what they normally did back in the day, just grab it by the tentacles and slam the thing against a rock. It's a little more civilized just to freeze it. But similar results, actually a little bit better result. So I'm gonna get this beak out right here. I just need a small little knife. The beak is right here where all the tentacles meet right underneath the head of the octopus and you just kind of want to dig around in there a little bit without stabbing yourself of course and release that little beak out of there feels like it's still alive let's pry it out just kind of little black pieces in there that are too hard to really eat 
Now, if you guys have ever worked with octopus before, I'd really like to know. I'd like to see how you guys are going to do it, how you guys have prepared them. Because uh, this way, I've done octopus several different ways. I like to do like a marinade at the restaurant, leave it overnight, at least overnight. See, this is all the, uh, the flesh from the beak right here. It's like a little white ball. And this is part of its, the hard part right there, little black thing. The weird slimy feeling on it too, but just that part. The actual octopus does not feel slimy at all. So we have the beak out. I'm gonna check for eyes. The eyes. Eyes look like they're. Eh. They're mostly gone. They already took out the ink sac. So if you can look back here on the octopus. You can see where it's opened up in the head, so that means that this is actually a pre-cleaned octopus and they took out the all the innards up in here, they took out the ink sac and everything like that. You can see little remnants of black in there where the ink sac was and where it released its ink. I like to invert my octopus head like that when I cook it because as soon as it goes down in there, as soon as it goes down in there in the water, it flips again. So this way at least I'll have the outside, the inside the inside in, the outside out, as opposed to the other way around. <laughs> What's wrong, Grady? Do we, do we feel bad for the octopus or a little, a little afraid of the octopus? This is about the size that I like to work with, really. Because this one is not too, too big, where it's going to be an issue to handle. And it's not too small where it just kind of feels like there's nothing there when you're done cooking. Because octopus, it really likes to shrink up when you cook it. I mean, I'll maybe get, out of these three pounds, I'll be lucky if I get a pound. I bought an octopus that was a similar size from the grocery store one day. And they charged me for the weight of the ice as well. I paid over $50 for an octopus and I got a pound out of it. It was not a, not a very good day. So I went back and complained, got my money back, whatever. Hey, what's up, B? What's wrong, man? Everybody scared of the octopus or what? <laughs> well, it's just octopus. Do you guys not like octopus? It's a different, different uh, ingredient to work with. It's a little bit less traditional. Well, actually, it's very traditional in a lot of countries like Portugal, Italy, Spain. Really, really popular with octopus. I'm not so sure about the Americas. Um, my wife loves octopus, so. Did it come out tough? Is that what the thing was? It, or it just didn't like the flavor or texture? Octopus can get really, really tough if it's not cooked properly. Like if you cook it for too long, it's like a chewing on a rubber band. If you cook it too short, it's like chewing on a rubber band. It's kind of got to find that nice little middle ground and you're good to go. So about, I go with 30 to 45 minutes, but I wait until like right down in here where you see the uh, the connection really close to the head up, kind of where the eyes are over here. When you poke on it with a fork, you stab it with a fork after it's cooked for about that amount of time, then you're kind of where you want to be. And that'll be, you can once it goes in really nice and easy, then it's nice and tender, you can take it out, cool it down. Yeah, it's not exactly the easiest thing in the world to cook. It's really not. Not eating it, why not? What happened to the octopus that you didn't want to eat it? It just, I don't know. A lot of people find it traumatic to see such a, a gigantic thing like that and not want to eat it. Feel bad for the octopus? Aw. <laughs> I guess I'm a little more heartless. I find it to be delicious. Um, normally when you cook the octopus, I always boil it and a really traditional way that they do it I like that remote there, B. That's funny. One thing I like with octopus to do with the water as well afterwards is a lot of people, traditionally, octopus is served with like potatoes on the side, but boiled potatoes cut up and stuff like that on the side. And they take the octopus water, which turns completely friggin' purple, honestly, and they cook the potatoes in the water as well. So you get that kind of octopus flavor going throughout your whole dish. It doesn't really give too, too much flavor or color to the potatoes, but it's a little something extra kind of. I guess sea water sort of a sort of a taste I guess you would go with 
more of an ocean taste than you would get if you had just boiled them in regular water. And also you don't have to cook it more water. But that's more like an Itali a traditional Italian way. Like I've had it at an Italian restaurant up in Cape Cod. Yeah, Cape Cod. And that's exactly how it was served. It was like, you get one of the, the long arms over here on your plate, grilled up. Two if they were short or small. And yeah, grilled up. So I like to boil them off and then I, I'll set them to marinate. I can, you can marinate them with anything. I do a lot of olive oil, a little bit of the cooking water and like orange zest, lemon zest, a bunch of different stuff, bay leaves, juniper berries, everything in the world that you can find in your spice cabinet almost that you think is gonna taste good, toss it in there. We're not gonna marinate today though because I'm gonna be doing a salad instead which can be marinated but I can't exactly marinate for 24 hours on stream and I wasn't gonna buy two octopuses. So the marination way is a really good way to go, but this will work just fine. You can use it immediately. Uh, a lot of times when you, if you're going into the marinade, like I said, put a little bit of the cooking water in there and it's gonna help kind of cool down slowly the octopus so it's not a complete shock. You don't wanna toss it into ice water later and shock the meat again because like I said, octopus is kind of a tough kind of a thing. And we don't wanna give it any more opportunities to be tough. I'm gonna be making some tostadas as well today because I don't have any in house. So I'm just gonna take some old tortillas and fry them up. <sighs> so, B, I guess this isn't exactly your kind of dish either, then, huh? <laughs> oh, Katie. Oh, this ain't like really good. Oh, it's not that bad. It's like fish. You know, you have fish where you live. Everyone has fish where they live, pretty much. It's the same thing. It's just another, it's another sea animal. Same thing like having a steak. I mean, you're not gonna give me that face if I touch a cow, or a piece of meat, or a chicken. <laughs> Still got it? I heard you. I hear you. Almost boiling the back there, just coming up a little bit to a simmer. So we can start with this thing over here. Once that gets going, move this over there so I don't have any splash in my oil. Kind of lightly turn this on about medium high heat. We got a little bit of oil in there to fry up some of our old tortillas. They're not old, old, but they're not quite new either. It kind of to the point where you're not going to use it like a tortilla. So we'll make it into a tostada. Sorry, words are difficult today. I don't know why. Move this stuff out the way. Yeah. So I have a little bit of romaine lettuce here. This is what I have left in house. I got a little bit of cilantro, some lemon, salt for the water and for the salad, a little bit of corn, some onion, little guy. And some tomato I'm gonna dice up, which I already have sliced, but I'm just gonna dice. Try and get rid of the old stuff in the fridge, right? All right, got a nice boil going on there. And I gotta add some salt to this water so we can actually season our octopus while it cooks. Uh, you can also add in sometimes, like for the restaurant, I do, I do it a lot different for the restaurant than I do at home. I'll take halves of lemons like this and I'll put like two lemons just cut in half in there. You can put some orange in there as well. I like to put bay leaves, salt, pepper. Um, I like juniper berries and everything lately. I don't know why. Right. You just want it kind of nice and salty. Kind of like if you're doing pasta water, almost the same exact thing. So you're, we're seasoning while we're cooking. Now I know the octopus is scaring you, but now we're gonna be doing a technique that's called scaring the octopus. So we do, we do, what I'm gonna do is you take the octopus like this and you drop it into the water. One, hold it for three seconds, pull it up. Another three seconds, pull it up three seconds, pull it down three seconds, up three seconds, and the last time goes in. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to scare our octopus. It's going in, one, two, three. You gotta see the feet going. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
One, two, three, and in it goes. And there it will stay. <laughs> oh, great, it's cracking me up. So we won't have to see this guy for a little while. I'm gonna put a timer on for a half hour. Put my heat down a little bit to about a seven. Put a half hour on there. Let's go over and I see this on the screen over here. It's hilarious. And we'll check in about a half hour. I'm just gonna stab with the fork in that little sweet spot that we were talking about. See how it goes. Clean up all this octopus juice around. Octopus is actually one of the, if you buy a pre clean octopus, and even if you don't buy a pre clean one, they're very easy to clean. It's one of the really easier things to clean up in the house. It really doesn't leave any bad residue, bad smell, nothing of the sort. Watch this real quick, and then we'll start chopping up our veggies. Kill it with fire. <laughs> oh, man. Octopus didn't do nothing to you guys. We have taken out the Kraken. So this, I'm just going to take off a couple leaves here and just kind of do a, a shave on it really. I'll save this for the last thing I cut actually because I don't want it to go rusty. Should be enough right there. We've got our cilantro. Cool thing with cilantro is you use almost everything, almost down to the bottom of the stalk. So I like to bunch, whenever I cut up herbs, I like to kind of bunch them up in my hand first and keep it really tight. This way I can just breeze right through it and they don't move. Just go straight through, no issues. Don't worry too much about the stem with the cilantro. Don't put all the stem in there. Like I put everything except for this, which is a decent bit of the stem. I'm gonna leave it more of a rough chop just because I want to see the pieces in there. I want the color of the green. I want all that sort of goodness. I already have the Corn, this is just canned corn, it's nothing crazy. You can definitely take it off of the ear as well. But, I didn't have any corn on the cob. Put this back in this bowl. And that's where we're gonna be mixing everything right up in here. Please don't scrape your hands with knives. Don't do what I do. Do what I say, none of this do. Yeah, pretty much a pico de gallo. That's exactly what this is for the most part. I'd really like to be adding some avocado in there. I don't have avocado. Um, that would be another different thing that I'd like to add in there. And actually having a tostado would be nice too. Alright, our oil is where it wants to be, speaking of tostadas. And so I put the tortilla in there. I'm just going to kind of push it down, trying to get it to cook and soften up. And the tortilla is starting to, it bows up when it gets, when it gets stale. And so uh, when you start putting it in oil, it's flattening out right now. Just press it down. And you don't want your heat too, too high. I think I might even drop it down a little bit more. And this, I want a nice, fine, sort of a pico. Nothing crazy fine. I'm not doing like a fine brunoise, but like decent. Oh, I'd say a dice, medium dice. I was thinking about garlic in this, but I turned away from the idea of raw garlic. Say as I say, is that what I said? I don't know. I didn't sleep very well last night. Their cousins in town, there was drinking, there was talking. 
We were Takis. My stomach can't do Takis anymore. Is that right there? Chat's right? Yeah, you're probably right. Chat's always right. Customer's always right, right? If it's retail, which isn't retail, they usually just say the customer's not always the right, customer's an asshole. In this case, the customer is right. Keep on pressing down on the tostada so it gets nice and, what's the word? Flattened and browned up well. Take off the top there. How much of this do I want? I don't want much of this. Maybe that much. It's a nice little knob, nothing crazy. I like to keep the this part intact, like I have it intact over here, the end piece, so that it keeps everything together and holds it together while I can cut onto it. And it's not gonna go moving away. This I want to cut a little bit finer than the tomato, just because a big raw piece of onion in the mouth is not really very nice. Now I'm just gonna go one more time through it just to make sure we're all nice and nice and cut up. This is more like a fine brinois than the than the tomatoes would be. The tomatoes are more like a medium dice, this is more like a fine brinois. Or as close to a fine brinois as you can get. I'm just gonna toss that in there as well. And our final ingredient is going to be our lovely octopus back there. Might just use all this tomato. I don't need to have sliced tomato sitting around the house. So how's everybody been? What's going on? What's everybody doing on their, with their Sunday? Yeah, I'm just using some old corn tortillas that we have sitting around the house. And you don't ever, never have to worry about apologizing, Craig. So I'm just going to take the plate and put a little paper towel on it so I can uh, take the tostada out. Nice and brown. I'm gonna use the other side because that has more like the cup. And move on to the next one. Lower the heat a little bit more. I don't want to turn on the fan. And start pushing down just like we did with the last one so it gets nice and flat. Want it to more or less kind of fry up very well on both sides. That one I kind of let go because I was doing other stuff. But it's fine how it is. You're nice and crispy. Crispity, crunchity. You need a butter, butterfingers? No, no butterfingers. We'll stop. Octopus is doing just fine there, B. He's sitting back here resting in the nice hot water. Head sticking out a little bit. Is that like a Twitch emote? I've never seen this emote anywhere. When I look in the emotes and stuff like that, I can never find this octopus cracking, whatever the fuck it is. It's like a cyborg octopus, that one. You would need. 
Oh no. I broke my tostada. Heats up when I want it to. Hydrate in a minute. Will do though, B. Thank you. Thank you for looking out. I don't have a hangover or anything like that, but mild. It's kind of blue today, so I don't know if I'm going to hydrate with water or have a little glass of wine and try and get some hair of the dog or something. side than the other one because like I said the oil's hot and it's browning up pretty quickly. There we go, I can finally hear it calming down. Some hot oil in the center there so it gets nice and crispy in there as well. I broke one, I need to cook more. We'll get to your hydrate immediately, B. Once I'm done frying up, I don't like to mess around too much with, with uh, oil. What do you want for hydration, B? Do you want wine or do you want... Uh, I would say beer, but I don't think I have a cold one. I'm actually have a cold one. Where do you want water? Oh. Really like an energy drink right now. That's what I would like. I don't want people like driving down to South Carolina. Beer would be hair of the dog. So okay, heard that. We were drinking Trulies last night of all things. Probably Agua. <laughs> Heard that. Yeah, I haven't tried the Truly stuff, it's not bad. It's like alcoholic seltzer with flavor. Keep on pushing down, check on our browning status. It's going nice and slow now, thankfully. I don't have to worry too much about it. Let me set that off to the side and grab my water. Mrs. B likes truly. It's not bad. My wife likes them too. My brother in law is the one that kind of got us into them. Yeah, we didn't drink all that much though, like three. Kind of done on drinking heavy past that point. Another nice tostada. one back here never happened. It's just gonna sit there and get some guacamole or something like that on it later. I don't have any guacamole. Damn it. I don't have any avocados. 
I really want some avocado, so this, uh, this would be a great addition to the salad. There would be some avocado in there, some nice chopped avocado. You can thank Wes for that idea. <coughs> next stream? Eh, I don't think I'm going to make octopus next stream. The next time I make this is guacamole with nachos. Can make some guacamole next stream. That'd be good. Some guacamole. I would say more tostadas, but we'll see. If we have any more old tortillas sitting around the house. All right, we're about halfway through with the octopus, so we can check it. Another 15 minutes. I live in Nebraska as well. This burger is going to drive me crazy one day. I put it down a little bit, it doesn't do anything. I put it down a little bit more, it goes too low. Put it up a little bit, it's about to burn. We'll see what happens. Heard that beef. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I'd really like to try that sandwich that you were talking about. I gotta see a nice recipe to figure out how to make the, um, I can't even remember how to say that. I don't know how to say that sandwich, to be quite honest. It's a traditional Nebraskan dish, which they said was sort of like a German, sort of an ancestry behind it. And it's basically like a bread stuffed with meat and cabbage and stuff like that. It sounds pretty good. Skipping Christmas this year. I have it with the immediate family, you know? I have it at home. I have it at home. Oh, what up, Deck? You guys still doing um, 2v2s? Gun fights? Smell delicious. I love that name. Hmm? Where the octopus? The octopus? He's in that pot right over there. I can't touch it again. I keep on touching it, I keep on getting everybody nervous. I'm sure Dad keeps octopus. He seems the type of guy that would be okay with it. Alright, these are all crap, so I'll just turn that off and put it off the side. See? I knew I liked you, Dick. I knew there was a reason I liked you. Octopus is delicious. It doesn't have a crazy flavor. It's nothing strong or anything like that. Like it even, I prefer octopus over fish. Any kind of fish. I prefer octopus over shrimp. I prefer octopus over any sort of seafood. I think this is my favorite seafood. It has a really fantastic, fantastic flavor. Is it salty? If you put salt on it. But no, it's not like naturally salty or anything like that. The um, ink sac in there is kind of nice though. If you can extract the ink, you can use it to make pasta. Make a black pasta. We can make black pasta one day. Um, yeah. It has no, it's not really salty. I mean, I add salt in the water so it gets some, some salt in it while it's boiling. Season while it boils. But aside from that, no, octopus itself is not naturally salty like that. It has a really cool texture. It actually feels like a more meaty texture than any sort of fish or shrimp or anything like that. You guys eat it a lot. 
I would imagine. I mean, in Thailand, that's more of an accessible thing, too. Because you guys are just a gigantic series of islands. Yeah, it's like squids, like eating calamari. Exactly, like squid, but better. It's like a really, it's a much better calamari. I'd like to know if deck buys alive. I buy mine frozen. If you buy it frozen, it's a lot better because the ice crystals have already penetrated into the flesh of the octopus and they started tenderizing it naturally. As opposed to buying it live and having to kill it and then taking it by the feet and bashing it against a rock to make it tender, which is what they did in the old days. Or you could just freeze it too, yourself, but it's a process too. Yeah, I know, oh my god, that's how they did it. That's what they used to do, I mean, that's how you, that's how you used to handle octopus. They would take it by the feet and just smash it. I <laughs> streamed today. I'm sorry, Grady. <laughs> yeah, you freeze it, thaw it out. It's a little bit more civil than um, beating it against a rock. Yo quiero que hoy te uses un plato de Disney, Mickey Mouse. Okay, no Every request for a special plate today, Disney plate. I just bought. Our special request of the day. Let's see if I can find a lemon squeezer. Which I can't. Oh well. It's a little too savage today there, Grady. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be mean to the octopus. Well, I'll get all the crap off of there real quick. Actually going in pretty pretty easily, quite honest. So I might be able to get it out after this half hour. <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, octopus is one of the best things that you'll ever eat. To be quite honest. Let's see which ones are going to be prettiest for pictures. I'm going to say those three. Put a little mayonnaise on too. I lied. I'm not gonna put mayonnaise on. I don't have mayonnaise. I don't think I have any mustard to make mayonnaise anyway. Cover it up the last little bit there. Let it cook a little bit harder. Move this out of the way. Bring this guy up. This can go away. I was going to make venison today, but I think the piece of venison that I've had in the freezer is just a little bit too old. But my boss is a big hunter and he loves, 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 loves to hunt deer. So his freezer is generally full of it. He gave me a piece last year, but it's a little too long now. So we made octopus instead. Had a very strange variety of things that we were thinking of today between octopus and deer, venison. Not our normal kind of a stream days. Normally we're doing chicken or shrimp. Actually, chicken, have I even done chicken or shrimp? I think I've done chicken one time. All right, I'm gonna cut this up because I need something to do. Wash it off real quick.
Don't worry about the carrots over here, they're just kind of there. We're not going to use them. I'm not entirely sure why they're there. Cut it in half one time just to make sure the strips aren't going to be too long. Or we're going to get a nice chipping up. I would prefer to do it with cabbage, but romaine lettuce is what we have in house. So we're going to do it with romaine. If you didn't understand the word chiffonade as well, chiffonade just means little ribbons. Come on, octopus. Five more minutes on our octopus. We can check good. Hmm. Right, you're going to come over here because I need the board for the pot. I like to check the octopus in front of you guys. So we can actually see what's going on with the pork, since we don't have that extra camera yet. Get that off there. Don't need the knife no more. Thank you everybody for staying around and dealing with our octopus stream of the day. Sorry, brain still trouble working. Four minutes. Four minutes and counting. So Deck, are you still playing with Uni? Are you guys is he still streaming? I think Uni is still streaming, isn't he? Uni is our one of our lovely mods. Yes, he is still going. And I see Deck157 in his party. Ooh, and Puerto Rican B. Oh, I want to play. Sorry, a majority of the people in here are all Call of Duty fans as well, aside from just uh, cooking streamers. Or enjoying cooking streamers, I guess. Speaking of which, back to if you're still around, I don't think I've ever got a, an invite from you. No, I heard that. I understand that grading. Um, cooking streams, I'd like to be able to do more often, yeah. Uh, right now, we have something that we're trying to get done with my wife. We're trying to uh, do some paperwork and stuff like that. So once we're done with all that sort of stuff, and I have a little bit more free time. I'm gonna be adding one extra day, so I'll have two days of cod and two days of cooking. The second day of cooking, I'm not really sure what it's gonna be. It's probably gonna be sometime during the week. If I have, um, I usually save one cooking stream for the weekend. I have Call of Duty on Wednesday and Friday. And so maybe either Monday or Tuesday, somewhere in there, I'll be able to do another cooking stream. Hello to the way. I'll tell her when she comes back. She just went downstairs. I think she's getting some out of the car. I'll tell you said hello. When? Le voy a decir que dice hola. We're still teaching her English. But her school opens up again in August, so she'll be able to go back for her ESL classes, intermediate area, intermediate level two or something like that. She's a boiling away. It's crazy how purple this water gets, even though the, the octopus doesn't lose any color, but the water turns just weird shade of purple. Yeah. yeah, that's purple. Just got smashed in the face with a, an octopus shower. Octopus steam bath. Two minutes. Count down. Kind of curious about my shit. You hear that beep? That's the countdown. Mm. I think this is not very high. This is uh, ex it's excruciating. Ugh. 
really surprised I don't have any mayonnaise. <coughs> Where if I have to make mayonnaise, I'm going to be a little upset because I really want mayonnaise. See if I even use them. I need you. I need you. I don't know how to work. So, here he comes. That's our octopus now. How he's doing? You can see it shrunk up a good bit. Woo. All right. So, apparently, the eyes were still in there, and when I was squeezing it, the eye just actually popped on me. That's pretty cool. So, right up here, where the Right below the eyes and right where the right above the um, legs is where you want to be poking to start feeling. And the fork is going in pretty easily, but it does still have some some resistance in there when you go a little bit deeper in. So I'm gonna leave it another 15 minutes <clears throat> and we'll go from there. See, it's not so bad. It looks worse than it is. Or it sounds worse, I guess, than it looks. Let me find some oil. Maybe we'll make some mayonnaise instead in the meantime. Got some olive oil. Pantry is barren today. instead. Some two egg yolks. That's a quick mayonnaise because you can't have a tostado without mayonnaise. It's just wrong. You don't need the whites at all. You only need the yolk. do it with one but it's easier honestly when you're making mayonnaise to do a, a larger batch just for stability honestly for the emulsion that's all I used to I think I have a little squirt of mustard in there and a little bit of vinegar salt and pepper and we'll have mayonnaise normally it would be white pepper so we can keep our color I don't have white pepper it's gonna be black. I got oil, I got that. There is a whisk somewhere in this house, I promise. whisk in this house. I want to use a fork and I really don't want to do it with the sand mixer. White pepper does taste a little bit different. It's actually kind of stronger and it's a slightly different kind of peppery sort of a flavor. I prefer dark or black pepper than white pepper but it does have a little bit of a difference in flavor. Uh, pink pepper is also kind of nice too. It's a uh, you can't really use it the same way. It's more of something that you kind of crush up and use for a decoration, but it has a little bit of a peppery sort of a flavor to it as well. That's a lot more mild. Green peppercorns, they're usually fine in brine. And it also has another sort of peppery flavor, but it's nothing even close to the same thing as black pepper. It's more of a pickled brine sort of a flavor. And they're extremely hard. You don't crush them up at all. It's more of just kind of using them to season the sauce.
No, why didn't nobody tell me? I'm over here looking and looking and looking, and you guys can see it the whole time. It's hiding right here. I'll break up the oaks a little bit. Thanks, guys. Just a little splash of vinegar, and we're gonna put a little bit of mustard just to kind of help with the emulsion. Tiniest little splash. You don't want it to be an overly vinegar sort of flavor. Obviously, mayonnaise is more of a one note sort of kind of. Everybody knows what mayonnaise tastes like, okay? My brain doesn't work enough for this today. That. Uh, I'm gonna might put some lime juice in it. A little piece of lime there. What did I come in here for? I came in here for mustard. Mostaza? Latine. Ah. We don't have mustard. Is it ready yet? No, it has some more time on it. A little bit of lime juice in here. We don't have mustard, but that's okay. The emulsion will still stay. So I'm gonna start just... <laughs> that TV. Yeah. Mustard's gone. Mustard down. We don't ever use it. La tiré porque nunca la usamos. Eran dos voces. Sí, exactly. Alright, so I'm going to go very, very slowly at first with the oil. Just to let it kind of come in. Tengo que hacerme un lado porque no tenemos. ¿En el bote no? No, no había nada. I'm going to put a towel down here to help me with the stabilization. That's one thing that you can do is make a little uh, circle with the towel if you're ever trying to make a dressing or anything like that, or mayonnaise in this case. And just go very, very slowly. Make sure that you're constantly whipping pretty much as fast as you can. Stay still, woman. Damn. And keep on whipping until we get a nice consistency. This is a extra virgin olive oil mayonnaise today. So maybe a little bit healthier than normal. And regular canola or sunflower seed oil. Hi. Hi everyone. Yeah, Lindsay dijo hola antes. Oh Curdy, you got a founder badge, I just realized. Say hola, say hi. I'm joining you, car. What's that, Lemiel? Mm-hmm. Is that a good wife right there? She's cleaning my car. But it's very hot outside. Oh. So she was a brave one and went outside today. Apparently, it's very, very hot. We're getting nice and thick here. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of extra oil that I have over here. This is just like a regular, I think it's a soy and corn mix. Just to have a little bit of different flavor in there so it's not overpowering on the extra virgin. I'm gonna keep on mixing and mixing. If you ever need to make mayonnaise, it's a really good arm workout. You agree with her? Yeah, well, it is a hot one. Let's see, it's a little beady still, but I'm gonna add now my salt. So that starts working in. I'm gonna add in some pepper. Good. 
All right, I keep on whipping. I like that in about midway. You don't. You can add it in the beginning. You can add it at the end. But I kind of like to see where I'm at with the volume, so that I know how much to put in. And if I put it at the end, then I'm still whipping and whipping and whipping after I'm already done. So I like to do it midway. Although it's not often I make mayonnaise. back on olive oil since we ran out of the other one pretty much we're just trying to add as much oil as we can until we can't add any more have you ever made mayonnaise before anybody crazy I'm gonna say B has not there we have some mayonnaise Never, so you learned last today. Yeah, it's just egg yolks. You can add a little bit of mustard for stability, like a Dijon's really good in this, and oil. Uh, I was asking if uh, you had ever made mayonnaise, Sir B. See, cook a little bit, so maybe. There we go. Nice. taste it. It's not going to taste anything like mayonnaise. It's not like the stuff that you buy at the store. It's not bad. A little lemon juice in there. Or like some garlic in there maybe. I'm going to put some garlic powder. I want to put. You can put fresh garlic, like um, a lot of times I'll do it in what it's called like Robacoos, like a food processor. And you start with a little bit of your egg, you put your egg yolks, you put the, meth, the mustard in there, a little splash of vinegar, and some fresh garlic. I'm not using a food processor today, I don't even own one. So, I'm just going to put some garlic powder. And another little splash here of vinegar because it has no sort of acidic taste to it. We do have a nice mayonnaise sort of consistency. It's a little bit yellow, obviously, from the egg yolks. Um, you can use pasteurized egg yolks, which is more recommended than this. Did you know Come on. that? Yes. Sí, creo que conozco la marca. A ver, prueba. No es mayonesa normal, te voy a decir. Sí, vamos a escuchar. Sabe muy rico y creo que es más healthy. ¿Quiere más sal? A little bit. Ajo. A little bit. Okay. I like so much. Thank you, Elvis. Mm -hmm. Approved. Let's try with the end here. Better. So this is a healthier version of your traditional mayonnaise. Especially since you're using extra virgin olive oil as opposed to using something different like, like I said, like a canola oil or soybean oil. And that's mostly because of like the cholesterol that it has and all that sort of good stuff. We just buy this at like Marshalls and stuff. That's a decent flavor. This one is from, where's it from? Greek, it's from Greece. Clean up a little bit. Our octopus is almost there. This can stay. This can go. So 
there we go. We learned how to make octopus and mayonnaise today. Ay, esa va a estar muy bueno. ¿Te gusta con la mayonesa? Sí, esa mayonesa era mejor. Como un barco más con el octopus, creo. Sí. Pero la receta es italiana. ¿Tú sabes cómo hacer mayonesa? Oh, interesante. 45 seconds of counting. Octopus is ready for a second check. ¿En qué quieres poner la mayonesa? ¿Como en qué contenedor? Tal vez en uno de los vidrios. Nunca. Creo que tenemos en el dispositivo, pero bueno, por ahora iré a la... Alright. A spatula, so we can put this in there later. It's not an extremely thick mayonnaise. Like you would normally find, you know, where you get your mayonnaise and it's so full of oil that it's kind of almost like spackle. This is just right, so it's going to be enough to uh, stick to our tostada. It's, because of the extra virgin olive oil, it's going to go really well as well with our octopus. We're just calling our name right now. Here we go. Back over here to try it. Back for our test. Yeah, our octopus is looking good now. I just need a bowl or something to put it in so it can cool down slightly. Turn off the stove. Forgot we have its original bowl that it was in right here. Oh. And I don't know if you can see it, probably not with the steam and everything, but the water is completely purple. Which I'm gonna save. Because I might make potatoes. I don't know, we'll see. I just want to let this kind of slowly cool down a little bit. I'm going to give it probably about a good five minutes here, and then we'll start cutting it up. Right now it's a little hot to handle. I don't mind the heat, but it's better for the muscles as well, for the meat of the octopus, that it actually just sits there and kind of chills. But the head did stay inverted, which is weird. It just doesn't want to ever stay outside out, inside in with the head. The head always wants to go inside out whenever you cook an octopus. It's very strange. That's something I've never understood. Then the feet always do little curls like a, there's an herb, it's not an herb, like a vegetable. I think it's called a fiddle something, fiddle stick, fiddle stick maybe? That curls like this, it's another greenery. Tougher? Oh, no, tougher. So our octopus is done. Our octopus, like I said, it took about, that was exactly 45 minutes. We could maybe go to an hour but it's not really gonna do any more for us. It's kind of good where it is. I could let it sit in the water and cool down just like that, take it off the heat, let it just sit down in its water and let it cool. That's another way you could do it. I could add a little bit of water to a marinade with some extra virgin olive oil, some citrus zest, some more fresh garlic, bay leaves, all that sort of junk, and let it cool down in there as well, which was gonna give it a huge flavor punch if I did that. We don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. We do that at the restaurant. But just like this as well, Letting it sit, let the muscles relax a little bit. It's just like anything when you cook a piece of steak. You cook it, let it rest, then you can eat it. Otherwise, all the blood and everything rushes out. Meat gets, it's just not as, it's not as good. Just playing with my mayonnaise now. So happy we made mayonnaise. First time I tried to make mayonnaise, I was about 15 years old, 16 years old. It didn't come out very well. I bought a special oil. I bought safflower oil just because that's what they said was the best oil you can use for it. It wasn't good at all. It was awful. I was a Hellman's addict at the time. So anything that wasn't Hellman's was bad. So we still have our lemon that we're going to be putting on there. I'm going to add that to the salad when I put the octopus in there so it gives a nice, good lemony flavor to the octopus. And we're good to go. Hope everyone's enjoying the stream. And hopefully we're learning something today too.
At least one of you has learned something. I don't know. You say you learn how to make mayonnaise now. It's a really, it's way different color. I can't, I don't know if you can tell the color difference, but it's more like a greenish yellow hue as opposed to a white. Like normally if you buy mayonnaise, like uh, McCormick or Hellman's or any of those sort of things, really, really white, 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 white. But a homemade mayonnaise, more like a aioli, I guess you could say. Not even close. It's different. If you have homemade mayonnaise and you have a regular mayonnaise that you get from the store and you have a homemade mayonnaise sitting side by side, it really depends on preference because they don't taste anything similar. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. I'm not entirely sure where the flavor comes from in regular mayonnaise, but we, we prefer McCormick mayonnaise that has a little bit of uh, lime juice in it as well. And it's, you know, McCormick mayonnaise. I that's the best one that we've found so far, but it has a completely different flavor still. It's white, it's thick, and it just has, it doesn't taste like this. Nothing does. I don't know why. Can't find a man that tastes anything like that. Well, I've had um, Hellman's Extra Virgin, and it was slightly similar. Heat's coming off of it a little bit, so we're good. In a second here, our knife is getting clean. And it's definitely going to need another sharpening. Or, well, straightening out, really. Because this doesn't sharpen, it just straightens. So, how's the uh, future husband been doing there, Grady? Mr. Cucho? You been doing all right? I saw him pop his head in here for a minute earlier on. Can't stop playing with the octopus. I don't know why. Just can't stop playing with it. Wow, that sucks. Nobody, no, it's never fun being sick. At least it's just a cold. I mean, something, you know, just goes away real quick. My patience is spent on the octopus. Yeah, I know that's the problem right now. I mean, the symptoms are so similar and it's just kind of like, oh, you have a cold. Well, are you sure it's cold? It's really, this is the time I'm getting sick right now. All right. Now the way I like to break down octopus, move this out the way so you can see. Hey, he's watching? Awesome. Hi, Kucho. So I like to take the head off first. First thing I like to do. And then I like to split it down in half and work with half at a time. I'll probably only use half for this salad. Actually, I'll save the other half for another application. I'll say I like to separate my legs. It's a little hot, that's why I'm using the tongs. And then I'll give a nice slice on them. So you get the nice little bit of a tentacle that you can see on the top, the little suction cups. Nice meat right there. I want to test to see if it's tender, which it is. I always like to leave on the end here these little guys, little squirrely, the little twirly things like that. I don't know why. I love them. Start adding this to our salad over here. I want to start mixing up. I can only deal with tongs for so long. I need my hands. From the amount of octopus that I have here, it looks like we're going to be keeping it just with half of the octopus. Mm. 
Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Does that mean that you're going to be willing to try making octopus again? Make it for Pooja the next time you see him. Oh, son of a peach. You can see the son of a peach over here? Hey, Uni with the raid. Thank you so much, Uni. Welcome in, Raiders. I believe I'm raiding myself as well. Thank you so much, Raiders. We are making octopus today. Octopus salad. How'd your stream go, Uni? So sweaty. Yeah, it looked sweaty earlier today when I was watching. Look real, real sweaty. All right, so we have our octopus in there now. Yeah, this is the other half of octopus uni. If you can see it. How do you feel about octopus, sir? Do you do you enjoy it? Ah, uh, semifinals too. Close. Mix them up a little bit. I'm gonna add some more salt in this. So we have a good base of salt in there. I'm gonna add our lemon juice now. I was, I was wondering earlier today if Deck was gonna go AFK during the tournament. It sounded like something that might happen. So I'm just taking the end of my tongs here and kind of grinding into the lemon so I can get all the juice out of there as opposed to using like a lemon squeezer, I don't know what they call them, extruder, something like that. Just digging on in there. Take all the last little drop that I can. Show deck the rest of the octopus. We have the other half right here and then the decapitated head right here. Let's see if I could invert it again. There you go. Inverted head. We have our cilantro, our tomato, we have some onion, the corn, and now our octopus, which is still a little bit warm in here. Give this a quick taste and we'll see where we're at. I think we're we're just about there on this octopus salad. Not perfect. So we'll go to plating. We made our tostadas earlier. We made our mayonnaise. Now let's put everything together. It's a little smear of mayonnaise there on the bottom. Not too, nothing too crazy, but enough to where you're gonna be able to taste it. Nice smear like that. One thing I've never been able to master is keeping the three tostadas separated on the plate. I feel like I need a plate ten times the size that I should. And we're going to start putting a little bit of our octopus on there now. You can top this with cheese, like queso fresco if you'd like, a little bit of cheese. I'm gonna leave it just like this because I want a more like a fresh summery sort of a dish with this today. Uh, 
I was wondering the same thing, Miss other Mrs. B. I was wondering the same thing. There seems to be a trend of uh, seafood hatred. If I can find another tentacle. I want the tip. Where's the tip? Just the tip? There were four tips. Tell me I, I, I used them all already. Gonna have to cut another one off just for a garnish. Yep. Just for garnish. So I want it to look pretty for our pictures. Which I'm gonna remember to take, I promise. I forgot something. But I'm not gonna put it anyway, because I don't want it. I was gonna put the lettuce on there. I don't want the lettuce anymore. Lettuce can go straight to hell. There is octopus tostadas with no lettuce or cabbage. But that's exactly how I would want to eat it personally anyway. So we have our tostadas, which are going to be able to hold up for a little while because these are homemade. Another tostada will, uh... Why don't I want it? Um, I don't know, I don't really like cabbage and lettuce on my tostadas because I feel like it always... I'll bite into it and it pulls everything off of there and it just makes a mess on my plate. I'm still an amateur at eating, tost at eating tostadas. My wife is the expert, not me. Clean up a little bit over here, and we can see who we can raid because now we are finally done with our octopus. We were able to cook and make an octopus salad all in an hour and a half. Really isn't that bad. Let's see who's on in food and drink today. Ooh, I love this guy. I know exactly who I want to go see. Eek. Compare names. Oh, wow, 1600 biddies. Thank you so much, Crady. That is insane. Thank you so, so much. Wow, that's that's some big hype right there. Holy hell. Uh, we're gonna go see Hey It's Me Salty. I don't know if you've seen him before. Oh, he's doing just chatting. Either way, he's an extremely, extremely good chef. <laughs> and yeah, he lives kind of close to me actually. He's somewhere, I think, North Carolina or Myrtle Beach area of South Carolina. But he's a really great chef. He's talking about uh, bread, I think. We're gonna do that. We're gonna go see him. Give him some love, give him some hype. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. Thank you so much, Crady, for the biddies and the subscription today. You're on fire today. On fire. Uh, yeah, but if you have other emotes, which most of you do, please give him some uh, hype in the chat. I will see you guys next time. We will find out if uh, what we're gonna be making next week. If you have any suggestions, please drop them in the Discord or the suggestion box on Twitch. Prefer it on Discord because it's kind of easier to check. But please do that. Thank you, everybody, and I will put these pictures up as soon as I can. Um, remember to take it. I promise. I promise on the Mrs. B. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks again.
Where's the my photos, Mima? I am confused. Is that a lady? Yeah, you can send me telephone. Nobody wants to finish this race. Here comes Webfrob in third place. Yeah. Surveillance guys want to take a top five, it looks like. Booster and Jasper battling for fifth and sixth. I'm going to take a little peek at our bread. So if you guys are new coming into the raid, we've been baking, doing this bread stuff for, for about six and a half hours now. I'm going to take a peek because our first two loaves are almost done. Our other two loaves are proving in the man time basket that they're going to bake after this. Let me go take a good peek. Where is that Carla Fuki coming? What kind of bread? We are making what's called a Queen Bee Loaf. It is a. Oh, oh shit! It's Speedy coming in! Oh, 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 Yo le voy a regalar a esta Toñita y luego le compramos algo a Alison. Okay. Porque es su cumpleaños. Sí, sí, sí. Para no estar gastando esto.
Y no le pusiste la verdura. No olvidé. No, 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 Están más preparados para la próxima vez que es su canal. ¿Qué vas a necesitar? ¿Qué vas a hacer? Porque nos fuimos a la tienda de esta semana. Entonces. Es que no necesitábamos nada. Había comida que estaba limitada, vemos. ¿Ves que la patota nos dio sabor? de por aquí también. Thank you. 